Right, um, we're going to talk today about how uh, we went about the, the process of researching and making these 4th century leather shoes that we have here. Um, they're made from uh, vegetable tan, oak bark tan cowhide. It's about 4 millimetres thick, which is the material they were made from originally. Um, we know what they look like. We have an excellent example. We have a picture of here. You see that there. Um, now, it was quite a complex, um, extremely interesting process to, to go through to, to sort of work them out, how they were made. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a template of the original, and from that template I cut out uh, a blank here from this four millimeter thick cowhide. Doesn't look like much of the shoe yet, and it did, say, did take some deduction to work out exactly how they were going to go together. Um, one of the things that became apparent straight away was because there's no stitching visible on the outside of the shoe, the stitching had to be on the inside, therefore they must have been stitched together inside out and then turned uh, the other way around, so the stitching's on the inside of the shoe. Um, this will have been so the thread, the, the, the weak point in the, in the construction, if you like, is kept away from the ground, kept away from the wear, so they, they last a lot longer. Um, now, the only way you can turn leather uh, like that is to soak it in water, and it becomes very, very pliable, very sort of malleable. Um, you can actually turn the entire thing around. So, from that, we know we're going to stitch it together inside out straight away. Um, and the easiest way to do that actually is to soak it in water, first of all, to make it make it very, very soft and very, very hard, but it's much easier to stitch there. You just have a quick feel of that. See how it kind of compresses and yeah, it's it's easier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now we start off here on the on the heel. This this was the most obvious place to start for me, just to start stitching down here. Now this has been stitched through the um, this is the inside of the piece of leather. This is referred to as the flesh side. So this side actually pressed up against the animal's muscle. This side uh, is the outside of the piece of leather. This is referred to as the, as the grain side. If you can see, it carries kind of stretch marks and little scars of these from the animal's skin. Hence the grain. So when we're stitching this together here, the grain side is actually on the inside of the shoe prior to our turning it. So we are stitching here through the flesh side of the leather but we're going through the, the side of the leather and then coming out through the actual thickness of the leather. So, if you imagine, the leather is butted together like that and the stitch is going through there but coming out here and back through this one, like that. So when we turn it, there's no, no stitch visible on the outside of the shoe. Now, looking at the originals, um, you might have thought that the stitches would have been pre-marked, if you like, and kind of measured distance. Uh, they weren't. Each stitch in the original shoe has been made individually. And um, looking at the, the, the size and the shape of the hole, um, they've been made with a particular sort of awl. This is a, is a contemporary awl, and awl is a tool used for piercing the leather prior to stitching it. Uh, this is a modern awl, very, very similar, clearly, to the, the old Romans used. It's diamond in cross section. It's kind of a diamond shape like that. There are diamond shaped holes in the Roman shoes, so we know they must have used something like this to make the holes. They're not evenly spaced. So they haven't been pre-marked. So clearly the person that was making the shoe was making the holes as they were going along. Now when I experimented with this, this makes perfect sense. If you make one hole and stitch that, the leather shifts ever so slightly to tension it, so you make another hole after that to make sure everything's completely aligned. Um, this was a process all the way around. Something that, that uh, became apparent earlier on was how, how was I going to work out what sort of stitch was used? So, looking at the original shoes, there are um, kind of S-shaped seams, if you like. I'll try and show it on this one, which is one of the finished articles. You can see, just on here, this seam here that we have on the heel is serpentine. It's kind of snake-shaped, if you like. Um, now, I experimented for a while to try and get that kind of shape on the heel. The only way you can do that is with a very, very simple running stitch. So a needle that goes in one piece of leather, and round and back and round and back and round and back. That is actually the simplest way you can possibly do it. Instinctively, I'll be a little bit more strength than that, more resilience. However, it was clearly done that way. It, it, when you tension it, it brings this kind of a shape here along the seam. Um, 
This, on reflection, kind of makes sense, because these, I would imagine, are occasionally made for mass production. So if you're going to make something in a mass-produced manner, you're going to make it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So a simple running stitch is the most efficient way of doing it. So clearly, those stitches go that way. Um, I initially assumed the stitching would have been pre-marked, and the first attempt that I made, I pre-marked the stitches, it didn't work. A so that was kind of an experiment that proved that couldn't have been the, the way it was done. So I went back to doing it by hand. So just to show you an example, I've here stitched up the heel, I'm now going to attach the uh, sole to the heel. And just to demonstrate, this though is still wet, it's nice and soft, but the place is under my knee to give it a bit of strength. Now with the ball, I'm going to make a hole through the flesh side and then through the thickness of the leather there. I'm then going to reverse the wall and I'm going to go back in the opposite direction. And so we of leather, so we have effectively holes which are opposite each other. I'm then going to take this steel needle with this bit of linen thread attached through the one piece of leather. Put it through the second piece of leather like that. Pull the needle through and pull that taut. I don't want to pull it too hard because I don't want to tear the leather. But we do want to get that seam really nicely and tightly butted together like that. In, uh, in contemporary leather work, and this is referred to as a butt stitch because the two pieces of leather are butted together like that. Okay, so just to show you that again, the hole through one side, out the thickness, back through the thickness of the leather, into the other piece of leather. Take the needle through both pieces of leather and pull that taut. So again, those two edges butt together. And it's difficult to see here, but just inside the heel, that is, that's now starting to acquire that kind of serpentine S shape. Now that's the process that I followed for the whole shoe. So having done the heel, the toe part was stitched together in a similar manner. Um, with the leather still being wet, it's very easy to form. So I then use this thing, which is a modern shoemaker's last Roman equivalent to almost certain made of wood. Place that inside of the shoe once it had been turned, and using a shoemaker's hammer, hammered down around the heel to give it that distinctive foot shape. Like that. The shoes were then allowed to dry, and the finished product uh, is these. To formed around the last, you know, that lovely rounded heel shape on the end, that serpentine shape with the uh, single running stitch, um, and the same around the toe. You notice as well the stitching is roughly perhaps one and a half centimetres raised up the sole, so very efficiently the stitching has been taken away from the ground, so that's not going to go through. So all we have in contact with the ground is leather. All in all, um, quite a sophisticated and quite a but simple way of manufacturing shoes, which works remarkably well. Um, having made them, there are various deductions and various inferences you can draw for how they were worn them. That's going to be for a sort of later discussion. But they're lovely pair of shoes, um, nice to wear, really attractive, and really quite efficient in their, in their manufacture.